Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School with Raphael Pos, who is not only a professor at uh, University of Pompeo Fabra in Barcelona, but is also the co-founder of uh, a retail technology startup called uh, Kaon. And you also have a PhD from uh, UCLA, Berkeley. Yeah, so in electrical engineering, 1992. Great. So welcome, Raphael. Oh, thank you. So, Raphael, um, the advantage that online retailers have with respect to bricks and mortar retailers is primarily one of uh, information. I mean, they can track everything that the customer does, they can track the inventory, whereas with bricks and mortar, things get, get really messy. And I think you refer to this as kind of a, a black box. Um, yeah, it's an opaque, dark. Uh, operation in the store yeah for now for now right yeah. but bricks bricks and mortar retailing though is is starting to uh, get much better information in, in part thanks to what uh, companies like Kaon are doing can you talk a little bit about yeah, correct how yeah, they, crack into this black box? online they they have a advantage two ways they can collect a lot more information about what the customers are doing and they are, can also provide a lot more information in the way of, of product information opinions comparisons recommendations and they are getting extremely good at that, you know, from from real time. They actually can create pages real time. And brick and mortar is far from that. And they are feeling, you know, uh, online is, is, is growing in double digits. Retail is stalling or growing very uh, uh, slowly. So they are feeling uh, the, the competition. And now, you know, they, they fear has uh, made them start doing something, you know. They want to compete. And they... They have some advantages with compared to online, you know, the immediacy, the proximity, the touch and feel of products, which is the social aspect of shopping. Uh, but uh, customers more and more expect information, you know, mm -hmm. uh, about the products, in-depth information. They expect social uh, media access. They expect comparisons, opinions. And uh, retailers also expect to be able to measure a, mo a lot more what's going on in their stores. So te IoT technologies and particularly uh, RFID is being massively adopted now, although adoption is probably somewhere between 5 and 10 percent only uh, in, in retail, but it's growing very fast. So, But, but have, haven't companies been using RFID in the logistics and the supply chain yes. for many, many years? Well, that was the beginning of RFID. Everybody thought, you know, the big uh, business cases would be in logistics, but as it turns out, uh, uh, the most benefit from RFID technology can be obtained in the retail floor, where more chaos, more uh, lack of information, more unpredictability happens, um, where uh, customers are uh, putting pl misplacing products, or customers are trying to steal things, or product, uh, other customers. Are, a lot of frustration happens due to this organization. So the idea is to enhance the customer experience, to take frustration out of shopping and create a satisfying, uh, because there's little frustration in online shopping, you know, and that's uh, and a lot of frustration in, in brick and mortar sh shopping. So by tracking products, by measuring how things are, by measuring inventory uh, in real time, by tracking what products are being examined, are, are being taken to the fitting rooms, uh, retailers can um, can improve greatly the customer e experience. Now, in, ter in terms of customer behavior, uh, a lot of retail stores are using technologies like beacons or uh, even cameras, uh, which they then Correct. convert into uh, information about customer movements and behaviors. Uh, what additional information can you get with uh, RFID, and how can you uh, take the information from all of these different sources and combine them into a complete picture of customer behavior? Beacons, Wi-Fi sniffing, NFC, all these are very good technologies to track people. RFID is very good at tracking objects. So if you want to track everything going on in your store, you have to track both customers and, and, and products. For instance, one of the things uh, brick-and-mortar retailers are doing to compete with online they are doing the shop online, pick up at the store kind of things, kind of uh, experience, which is becoming very popular, especially in some countries such as France. And, um, you know, but in order to do that, um, you have to have very good control of what you have in the store, because otherwise you cannot be accepting orders for things you don't have, right? And right now, divergence from stock, uh, theoretical to real stocks can be up to 20%, because stock is taking is mainly um, an accounting process, you know? Uh, but now RFID technology allows 99 plus uh, accuracy daily. In fact, well, RFID technology allows for real-time inventory, antennas overhead, 
or antennas on the shelves, you know, can give you exactly the inventory and location of every product on your store. So you are in a position as a brick and mortar retailer to compete with online. So I guess retail is not dead just yet. Oh, no. Uh, they will put a, a fight. They will put a big fight. And there's a lot to be said for uh, brick and mortar retailing. We humans like, the, like to go out, like to get out, like to socialize, you know. But we have high expectations that have uh, been uh, uh, given to us by online, you know. And we don't want to give up the convenience of online shopping when we go into retail stores. So if, we, if brick and mortar retailers can uh, give customers the best of all, both worlds, you know, the, the immediacy, the physical contact, the social aspect of, of shopping, plus all the uh, uh, frustrationless experience and uh, information richness of online, well, this is a winner, right? Rafael, thanks for coming back to Berkeley. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm.